Hi everyone. Today, oh, ouch! Great way to start the video. Hit your uh, knee off the table that you use to prop your iPad up in order to <laughs> give a proper viewing experience. So I'm kind of level with everybody. Um, anyhow, ow, that hurt. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yes, today. <laughs> Great way to start off the first 30 seconds of this video. At least you get some humor in it. I'm going to have to go back through my videos and put together like a blooper reel just of me not being able to talk and me doing silly stuff or forgetting something at the beginning of the video at the end of uh, 2021 just to <laughs> have like a blooper reel from the last couple of years because, oh my god, <clears throat> some, of, some of the stuff is just hilarious. Uh, what I do, I guess. At least it is to me, so... If you would like that, let me know. So now that we're a minute into this, we are going to review today the movie Hot Rod, starring Andy Samberg, uh, Bill Hader, um, I Isla Fisher. Is it Isla Fisher? Or Isla Fisher? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, Ian McShane, Danny McBride, and there were others in this film that I don't know the names of them off by heart, but what a comedic crew. I will give them that. So this movie is about uh, this movie, Rod Kimball. Uh, he's a stuntman trying to save his stepfather um, because his stepfather is basically on his deathbed. He needs a heart transplant, and it's $50,000 for the surgery. And I honestly, I don't know why surgeries cost so much. Uh, they, sh they really need to lower the price of surgeries, especially for uh, people who obviously need like a serious surgery, like something like that. I don't know if $50,000 is the actual price of that, but whatever it is, uh, most surgeries cost too much and a lot of people can't afford it, um, which is why it's nice to live in countries with free health care. Well, let's just say that much. Um, because obviously I know this movie is supposed to be in the United States, and the United States has such a problem with their uh, health care prices. They should be so much lower. So uh, I feel, I guess, sort of blessed to live in uh, Canada, where I do. Well, I guess I got really real there for a second. Anyway, back back to the movie review, because that's what this is about. Um, <clears throat> not the real... Uh, well, I guess, I guess it is some sort of an important topic to talk about healthcare, but that's totally for another video. Um, a more serious video, maybe I'll have to start a third channel of talking just about uh, world issues. I don't know. It's something, something to think about. Uh, but let's just grind the movies for now, and uh, when this channel and the food channel takes off, we'll see where we go from there. So anyhow, he's trying to save his fa or stepfather, my bad, Sorry, from uh, obviously dying and uh, raising enough money to get him this heart transplant by doing this big, huge stunt, jumping 15 buses, which is one more than Evil Knievel jumped, I guess. Now, I don't know if that's actually a true statistic. I would have to go look that up and see how many bu buses Evil Knievel actually jumped, because I think it was, wasn't it in the, like, 20s or 30s? Like, high 20s, early 30s that he jumped? I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did way more than 15 buses. Maybe that was his first bus jump. I'm pretty sure he did way more than that. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, comment it down below and let me know the actual number of buses Evil Knievel jumped. But I guess uh, the story is he thought his real father was a stuntman who worked with Evil Knievel, and I guess um, he was kind of lied to. Uh, his father was not a stuntman, he had a totally different career trajectory, and he his real death was not doing a stunt. It was choking on a piece of pie. So, <laughs> um, I guess Rodney has kind of, or Rod has totally taken a different life uh, style choice than his actual real father did, um, which ends up being good for him in the end. Ooh, because he is able to raise the money for his stepdad and get him the heart surgery because he is trying to prove his love for his stepfather by fighting him, which kind of seems like an odd thing, but I guess it is uh, kind of in a way showing a sign of respect or trying to get respect from somebody 
who isn't your real dad, and I guess that was the way he was trying to earn it. He does earn it in the end. Uh, after learning that Isla Fisher's character, whose name was Denise, right? Um, <coughs> her name was Denise. Uh, obviously, it was his love interest in this movie, but her boyfriend tries to stop that from happening at every uh, turn that he can anyway. Um, even though it seems like he's kind of doesn't really care about her that much himself. Uh, and the boyfriend was played by Will Arnett. I can't remember his name. Uh, but I guess that's not really important because he was kind of like a secondary character as opposed to the rest of this movie. But um, I guess there were quite a few real stunts in this movie. I'm thinking Andy Samberg had a stunt double for most of these. Now, I'm not sure what he did on his own and what he didn't do on his own because I know that Danny McBride has lost some hearing due to uh, explosions that he set off. And I'm not sure if he's lost... Uh, any appendages or anything, but he, he may have along the way, because I know he does a lot of uh, pyrotechnics for movies, and a lot of the explosions you see, Danny McBride sets off himself. Um, I've actually learned that from watching, I believe in Tropic Thunder, was one of the was the movie where he lost part of his hearing. Don't quote me on that, I could be wrong, but, but I believe he did lose some hearing in his left ear, uh during that, because he set off the explosion when he wasn't supposed to, and I guess he was too close to it or something. And, uh, I guess, obviously, there should have been better communication between crew and cast in that situation. Um, but anyhow, uh, obviously, this is just laughs all the way through, based on the, uh, comedic group that they've put together, uh, Andy Samberg is probably one of my favorite comedians, and Bill Hader, and I love Danny McBride. Um, his sense of humor is exactly like is exactly like my sense of humor. It's kind of dark, I guess, in a way. If you've ever watched some of Danny McBride's uh, other stuff, and he just doesn't care. Like his humor knows no bounds, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Maybe other people would disagree, but I think he's one of the funnier people as far as comedians go, at least in movies. I don't know if he does any stand-up. If he does, please let me know, because I'd like to see that, just to kind of get a uh, feel for what he is as a stand-up comedian, if he has done anything in the past uh, stand-up-wise. Um, but anyhow, the, some of the, most of the scenes in this movie were absolutely hilarious. Like, uh, they make, they poke fun at a lot of certain uh, social... Sh bleh. Social, social, geez, situations, um, like needing a quiet space or a safe place to go <laughs> to release your, uh, I guess, anger. And it was kind of like a scene from Footloose where he's just dancing in the woods and then he trips and falls down this hill for a good, like, I would say probably two minutes at least. And you're, you're just killing yourself laughing the whole time. Just, um, at the way that scene was shot as he's falling, you can just... They're shooting like from a distance where you can just hear him rolling down the hill and screaming. And then he lands at the bottom and he's like completely fine. No cuts, no bruises, no broken bones. Just kind of in a little bit of pain. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of George of the Jungle where they say uh, in this movie nobody dies. They just get really bad boo-boos. That was kind of like uh, that scene right there. And uh, obviously all the stunts that he did fail for the most part because he's just on this bike pedal bike with like this little motor in it and it's just oh my god absolutely hilarious um and then there was one scene at the end where he's going to do his final stunt and they're traveling through the uh small town that they live in and it looks like <laughs> these people are following them just singing along dancing or er, <coughs> <coughs> sorry i'm joking uh following them just singing along to the song and then all of a sudden it just breaks out in this giant riot. So, like, the the people that were following them weren't even part of the actual crowd that was going to be at the event. It was something entirely different. So they get caught up in some uh, crazy stuff. And <laughs> Danny McBride, uh, Danny McBride's character is just standing there talking about how they barely had time to get out of there while he's holding the TV in his arms. And uh, <laughs> just, oh, my God, this movie is just hilarity the whole way through. Um... So that's why I have to give uh, this movie a 10 out of 10 rating. No matter how many times I watch this, uh, it always it always makes me laugh. And I do laugh at a lot of things. I'm a, 
I love humor, and sometimes even if other people don't find it funny, I'll laugh at it anyway, just because, uh, yeah, no point in going through life uh, angry or sad or be happy. Um, find happiness wherever you can, and I guess that is a lesson to learn. Um, and if you're feeling down, this would be a movie to definitely go watch. Uh, I'm sure this would be this is a good pick me up uh, movie if you're ever feeling down because it's just f funny from beginning to end, and I'm sure anybody can find some sort of humor in this movie regardless on whether you think some of it goes too far. There's something for everybody comedically in this movie, I, I think, anyhow. anyhow. Um, so yeah, 10 out of 10 on this movie. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts on this movie if you've seen it. If not, please go watch it, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.